Got a few great topics today. We also have guests joining us. We have Harsh Karana, the CEO and founder of a company called Cultivate. Uh, Harsh, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. So, uh, so tell us a little bit about what Cultivate does, and um, you know how how you guys are helping people discover and 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 bring more demand to to Made in America products. Yeah, of course. So, Cultivate it was built during the pandemic, and and the way we kind of thought about building something was well, everybody's searching on Amazon for products. So, how do we really bring transparency and alternatives to to those products that are going to be U.S. made? Um, what we did was, well, 70% of search starts on Amazon. Let's build a browser extension that sits on top of Amazon, captures every search that's going on and spits back to our users or consumers, US made alternatives if they exist. And if not, very soon, we'll just give you merchants that are helping you pay back to the local communities, local economies, helping small businesses, helping um, you know clean water projects across the states and so on and so forth. So pretty much kind of building a cleaner shopping experience um, off of Amazon pretty much. Um, to give back to small businesses, um, help grow jobs in the U.S., uh, and give back. All things that ring very true with with the show and 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 uh, many topics we've discussed in the past. There's an interesting story I think you had on on uh, on Mark Cuban and how you got him involved with the company. Is that right? Yeah. So during the pandemic, when the idea first struck me, I thought. Hey, we got to get somebody big involved. Uh, we have to make a difference, and the difference has to be kind of quick because the the pandemic was storming on and small businesses were suffering. So we quickly put together a deck. Uh, I sent them a nice one line pitch with the deck, um, and that's really what it takes to to really get to him. He's very open to email. We shot him a note. We got to talking within seventy two hours. Uh, Mark said, "Let's go do this thing." We got to building in May and by mid July, he said, let's go tweet about this thing. And that really took off um, for Cultivate. So cold email, one line pitch with, when you attach the deck that, you know, like he takes attachments, doesn't go to some spam, you know, like that, that's what it was. That, that's all it took really. It's a, it's a Gmail, right? So he knows if it's a virus or not. So the Google slide deck, not a PowerPoint PDF deck. Uh, went through cleanly. Um, you opened it, and literally within an hour, I heard back. Wow, that's awesome! Um, it's great. So, so I've I've got it's a browser extension, right? So, uh, I mean, you also have a, a a website here. I'm screen sharing. You can also shop on your website, but I would imagine that the primary use case is you get this browser extension. I go to Amazon. I just like punched in umbrella, I don't know, something random, and and you actually have the top like you are. Um, interjecting this new uh, kind of uh, horizontal uh, box here with, you know, these are American made alternatives that you're layering in. These ones are actually from Wayfair. Uh, and I clicked through to one of these just randomly and, and looked at the umbrella and looked at the Wayfair site. And yes, it says country of origin is the United States. So that's very cool. I see that integration. Then I clicked on another umbrella on Amazon's site. And it looks like, are you doing this? It says seller from Massachusetts, USA. Are you giving that intelligence on where the seller is from? That's exactly right. So there's a ton of use cases, right? So every time you click on products, we show you where the seller is from. And if we also have other information, like where the brand is from and the trademarks and all that good stuff, we show you that information too. What's happened from that is that a lot of folks like you've seen on YouTube channels or podcasts have picked us up. They found fake products, fake products claiming to be made in the USA. Um, but it, you can see the seller and the brands from China usually, um, but claiming to be made in USA and they've been able to point that out. So that's been the use case there. What you pointed out is exactly right. We try to show you US made alternatives. Um, umbrellas apparently were only found at Wayfair at the time. So we have Wayfair uh, umbrellas showing, but we try to get you to small businesses. Um, and that's the goal. So I love that you're showing me where the seller is from, because that's nice. We've covered on the show, by the way, that I think like 49% of the top 10,000 sellers on Amazon are just straight Chinese factories. So, you know, this isn't like, you know, it's actually not so commonplace for these sellers to actually be from the US, you know? Uh, so, so that's actually a really good point of information. Even if the product, I mean, this is, the, this is where it's hilarious is the origin says made in the USA or imported, <laughs> you know, like, okay, thanks Amazon. Really, that's, that's super helpful. Um, but, you know, what categories have you seen that um, 
I'm on your website now. You know, what categories would you say are you seeing maybe some of the most traction with? You got a bunch listed here on the site, but any any that you're seeing like a, you know, much more success or progress with from from these, you know, as you're saying, smaller, more independent kind of true made in America product categories? Yeah. So you'd, you'd see a lot of like beauty products being made here completely. Uh, I think that the world just trusts that the U.S. manufacturing processes for those products are just better. Uh, you don't want to get something in a box that's going to give you a ton of, you know, rashes or whatever the case may be. So beauty has been a big, big category for us. Um, obviously, electronics are tough, but I think I see a lot of um, changes happening where even the chip chip makers are coming back here, uh, which is incredible because that, that will speak to the growth of Cultivate as well as this country as far as tech is concerned. Um, to that point about you made uh, about the Chinese sellers, we actually did uh, have, we have a new set of data. Uh, we did an analysis on 285,000 sellers on Amazon through the extension. 53% ended up being China. Um, keep in mind, like all of that money that's going there is not paying any taxes in America. So that's about a, a quarter of a trillion dollars not paying taxes in America for sales that are happening from U.S. consumers. You know, fr frankly, it's disgusting. Um, and we've talked, <laughs> you know, I've, I've shown the workflow on the show where, you know, there is a, a way. It's very archaic. It's very nuanced. Like it's even difficult for me to do it. And I'm so passionate about it. But there is a way to try and find uh, made in America, or maybe it's just sold by small businesses, small businesses in the US. But clearly, it's not a priority of Amazon to try and surface this information. And it's just so befuddling to me as to why that is. Where, you know, like it, it, it could just be another feature, right? Just another criteria. Maybe they don't get it right all the time, but it's not even, they're not even trying to really integrate it and bake it into the, into the search and, and filtering flow when you're shopping on Amazon, which I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, it's disheartening, frankly, and it just still confuses me why they don't even try to do this. That's a great point, right? And there's layers to it. Like there's so many layers to it. So imagine, um, you know, just volume wise, the, the mass manufacturing happens in China uh, or, you know, some other country. U.S. doesn't do the same mass manufacturing. So what happens is that the small player, players in the U.S., the small businesses, like there was this company called Boardwalk T-shirts a while ago from Venice Beach. They were making great T-shirts. China found out, cool. These factories started making the same shirts, but at mass volume, $5 less and gave it to Amazon. Amazon, all they care about is their GMV number going up and their, you know, and their fees rather or not stay the same, right? But the GMV number going up is all that matters and the, the one that's gonna give them the most goods, that's who they go for. And they can't yep. upset that crowd by saying, hey, here's a made in USA filter. Because on the other side of things is that their ad revenue is the biggest growth generator for this, I guess their platform now. And you'll see like the first two pages nearly on Amazon's searches at this point are all sponsored searches. And they're bought by either, you know, big factories in China or the big sponsors here. So you're kind of just, as far as a small business is concerned, completely disadvantaged. And, and that's what we're trying to really solve here. It's like Tim Cook taking the designed in California slogan off the back of the iPhone, right? You know, you don't want to bother. You don't want to bother your supply of goods from China. You don't want to annoy China. And so you just take it off altogether because clearly China was ticked off that we were saying, oh, well, yeah, it's designed in California, but made in China. Just like this, right? Uh, Amazon doesn't want to disturb. They just want to they want to ramp their GMV. They don't want to disturb all the supply that's coming from China because that'll hurt their ability to 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 grow GMV. And now they're getting yeah probably a lot of ad dollars from you know, these Chinese factories, these, these direct to Amazon brands like Anker, um, you know, where all that production is really just straight out of a Chinese factory with, with kind of a U.S. Uh, brand and image on top of it. So, I mean, it, it, it's such a sad sight, which is why we wanted you to come on the show because, you know, I love what you guys are doing and, um, <laughs> you know, it's much needed. It's it's actually surprising to me why it's 2021 and it's taken this long to right to try and promote made in America purchasing. There are some smaller like marketplaces that we've talked about on the show um, that are supposed to have made in America products, but they still haven't really broken out. So I love that you're just kind of layering on top 
of the of the of the purchasing flow going through to an Amazon. Walmart's doing this too. Walmart's going to China and promoting uh, Chinese sellers uh, to just list directly on Walmart. They're easing their their listing requirements from Chinese sellers. So I love this approach. Uh, how do we get it? What what can we do? How can we support Cultivate? Yeah, look, it's very simple. Um, all we want you to do is download a free extension. Uh, the free extension exists on Chrome, Firefox, uh, Safari, Brave, Opera, you name it, we're there. Um, the links are, are in the in the channel. Um, you can just pick those up. And once you download the extension, you can head to Amazon, search for any product. We'll tell you where the seller is from, where the brand is from, give you some alternatives if, that, if that's possible. Otherwise, if you search on Google, for instance, we'll even show you, whereas, um, you know, if you're buying a coffee maker, for instance, and there's five different merchants selling it, you can buy with one of our partners and give back to a charity of your choice. And we give you that option. Um, that way you're buying the same product, but you're actually making a difference, uh, even though you can't find a US made alternative. Um, and, and the goal is to kind of just build that cleaner internet. And, and, and you can do that very simply by just downloading the extension. I've got the site up here. Go get the extension, it's free. Like, why wouldn't you do this? Kind of surprising that Honey hasn't done this either, right? I mean, they are like the the Goliath of of, uh, you know, kind of shopping extension insights, right? I'm sure you've been tracking them and what they're doing. Maybe maybe they're a future acquirer or something like that for you guys, but- There's certainly role models in the industry. Well, Harsh, love having you on. Um, gonna keep talking about the company because it's awesome what you guys are doing and it's much needed, long overdue. Keep us posted on on how it's going and hope uh, hope Cuban makes a lot of money. Hope you make a lot of money. Hope you bring a lot of money to American manufacturers. Uh, it's much needed. And I think that's that's the nice kind of silver lining in all of this stuff with COVID is it's really, I think, awoken many, many tens of millions of Americans, if not more. And, and manufacturers, we got to bring it back, right? We got to bring it back and we got to promote American made uh, uh, products. So any last words on your on your end? Two things. One is hey, we just had to make this destigmatized. Um, this is not political. This is helping your neighbor. This is helping your community. And that's what really matters here. And two is that very soon we'll be having a shop local feature. And I think you'll love that the most because it's local businesses as close to you as possible selling the products that you need. Uh, we've harvested data from two and a half million merchants across the U.S. We'll be launching across all 50 states in, the, in Q1 2022. Whereas you can find uh, a lawnmower within 10 miles of you. You can find anything you need within 15 to 20 miles of you. And I think that's going to be a big difference maker for the communities, um, whether or not you can buy a U.S. made option or not. That's huge. Harsh, uh, thanks again. And uh, hope to be hearing from you soon. Thank you for having me. Take care. Well, that was a great way to start things off today. I've been looking for this company for a long, long time. And uh, the shop local thing you just talked about, that's great. Love it. I mean, this is what I've been saying. It's going to come back. And it's just weird why the, I mean, I guess it's not weird, but it's weird why the big tech monopolies aren't leading the charge on this. I think he had some good points on, you know, basically their, their competing interests for them to keep their growth going. And China is giving a lot of money, both in the form of resources to enable the supply chain of flow of products to the big tech monopolies. And B, actually hard dollars in, in the case of Amazon's advertising business. So whether or not big tech gets on board with this, it's a need. It's not political, as Harch said. It's a need for both uh, consumers and manufacturers and sellers to really promote locally made and, and made in America products. So I love this. Hi, I'm Alex. Thanks for watching the show. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, but even better, make sure to follow us on Odyssey, follow us on Rumble, and text us 203-646-5159. Text the word Monopoly. You'll be subscribed. You'll get updates about when we're going live, our latest videos, and we'll send you even a little goodie bag. And in the event that we all get banned from big tech, we'll still be connected.